Hi everyone and welcome to our first ever episode of Fitstyler TV. Today we're going to interview Wayne Timoney, he's won our Fitstyler of the Month uh, for September. Also we're going to head to the office, uh, Joel's going to show us a workout which you can do at work. We've made up a recipe for you guys to try at home, it's a chicken pesto pasta, a nice carbohydrate meal for you to see the energy in boot camp sessions. We'll also have Marita showing you some hints and tips and techniques to train at home and in the park as well. Thanks guys and let's get straight into it. Timoney, he's won our Fit Style of the Month for September. Uh, Wayne's been to pretty much three sessions a win for the whole year. But uh, he's been training extremely well this month, so we decided to give it to him. So, um, Wayne, um, how, many, uh, how, how long have you been in fit style? How long have you been training with us? Uh, it's about three and a half months now. So three and a half years, sorry. Three and a half years? Yeah, yeah. And um, how many, uh, like, what motivates you to get up, you know, three times a week? And you know, uh, I think just a case of setting yourself goals and yeah, just maintain it and being consistent. That's really the main thing. I think once you get into the rhythm, it becomes automatic, so you just get up and go. And uh, what sort of goals you're looking to achieve? I mean, we've been training for three years now. What, like, what do you have in mind? Is it just general fitness that you can keep doing? Yeah, for me, it's just been general fitness. Um, maybe next year I might uh, challenge you to a marathon, so that will have to be a goal to aim for. So, uh, mark it on the calendar. So, like that. Yeah, so, like that. Um, and what do you enjoy most about the sessions? I think the variety is really good and um, I think just the group that we've got really makes a big difference. I think it's very social and you know the interaction we all have and I think that really helps everybody to get through and you know all the banter that goes on. Yeah. And obviously I think the trainers we've got as well. I think um, you know yourself uh, especially you probably sets the, the bar for most of it to and I think we all get a real good workout so and, uh, do you have any tips at home you can tell me one of your about your health and fitness and yeah. what they can do to, to... I think, um, yeah, you need to really look after yourself because uh, we're only here for a short time. So, yeah, the more you do to look after yourself, um, the better you're and you'll stay healthy. And obviously that's a good thing, you know, going three times a week for a year, uh, you know, if, the more you do it, the healthier you'll stay and that'll help you get through all the colds and cold winter months and stuff. So, yeah, keep going and uh, you'll get there. Beautiful. All right, well, thanks heaps, Wayne. All right. Uh, Wayne's actually going overseas for uh, a month, so when he gets back, we'll give you two of his free movie tickets and enjoy it. Thanks, Wayne. Welcome to our cooking segment. Today I'm cooking up a chicken pesto pasta, a favourite dish of mine that I like to have as a bit of a uh, carbohydrate hit before a game of football. Um, I tend to eat my carbohydrates about 36 hours before a big event. Um, for me, it's a game of football, so I'll Generally, with our GPS results that we have, we tend to run about 10 to 12 kilometers at the very least. Um, other, on a good day, we'll probably run up to about 13 or 14 kilometers um, next Saturday. So, um, in order to um, have the energy to do that, um, a big carbohydrate hit for me does the trick. So, uh, that tends to be on a Thursday night before I play on a Saturday. And I'll find, and I've done a lot of trial and error in the past with carbohydrate eating myself and I found that the night before doesn't really work for me. Um, it may work for you. Um, it's just trial and error for each individual. Everybody's different and the body is made up differently and our body reacts to different types of foods um, differently as well. So um, in this dish it includes chicken which is um, great for your protein intake, um, a little bit of fruit and veg, we've got some sun-dried tomatoes, uh, but we'll be making up the pesto from fresh as well and the pesto will just include some pine nuts, uh, basil. Okay guys, uh, just going through each ingredient for today's dish with the chicken pesto pasta. Um, so we're going to make the pesto separate, um, the healthy version. To start with, we've got the pine nuts which we'll uh, crush um, and basically we'll add the basil as well, take some few leaves of basil, um, mix it all in with the pine nuts um, and also add parmesan cheese on top of that as well. Mix it all through, basically crush it so it's a nice fine pasty type mixture. Um, you can also add garlic to the uh, pesto as well. I'm not a huge garlic fan myself, and because I'm going to eat this later on, I'm not likely to add garlic to it. Uh, so that's the pesto side of the dish. On top of that, I've got some fresh pasta here, which I'll just get from a pasta deli, um, which you can get from your local markets. Uh, there's no great difference between like, the fresh pasta or the package, packaged pasta. Just totally a personal preference. 
Um, as I was mentioning before, um, instead of the creamy version, we've got one nice and healthy. We've got the light and creamy coconut flavoured milk and gives that extra coconut flavour amongst the dish. Um, great nutritional value in this uh, tin. Uh, got a little bit of sugar to it, but overall, per serving, it's uh, not too bad at all. Uh, we've got our fat-free semi-dried tomatoes. Uh, fat-free version uh, generally are soaked in a mixture of water and vinegar. The vinegar flavour to the sun-dried tomatoes is uh, delicious. Um, obviously a healthy alternative to the full um, sun-dried tomatoes which are soaked in oil. And we've got our chicken which is diced into one centimetre cubes. Uh, we'll fry up the chicken, um, cook up the pasta. All in all this dish will take about 15 minutes to prepare. Okay guys, so we're getting to the point where it's nearly time to dish it up. Uh, getting to the conclusion of the cooking part. Uh, just frying up the chicken, uh, we're almost done. Once the chicken is done, just going to add the uh, coconut milk to it. Uh, once we have the coconut milk, we'll tip in the sun-dried tomatoes as well. Let that simmer for about only a couple of minutes just to get the flavour through the chicken with the coconut flavour. Um, and get the pasta out, uh, rinse off the pasta. And I'll also just show you what I've done with the chicken pesto pasta. Uh, so basically I'll do it the old fashioned way uh, where I just add the pine nuts, uh, basil leaves as I go along and the parmesan cheese. So I basically just mix up a mixture that I think is suitable for me um, in terms of the pastiness that I want. Um, I guess with this one, the easier option is just to use a mixer or a hand blender, uh, which will take you 10 seconds. Um, I like to waste my time and have the TV on in the background or music, uh, take my time doing this, but at the same time, we can still have other things cooking. Uh, we'll finish that one off later. Chicken's just about done. We'll just finish that off. Basically just tip in the coconut milk, turn the heat right down. With coconut milk, I probably tend to use half a tin per serve, um, or even a third of a tin. Again, just depending on the type of the mixture that you want, whether you want a little more of a soupy type um, flavor and texture, or if you just want it to um, be really pasty, Obviously a little less again, so um, we'll let that sit for a little bit, we'll add the sun-dried tomatoes, and we're just about done. The pasta is just about cooked, so it's all in the timing basically. Uh, this dish is also good uh, to make up uh, a lot more than one serve, so um, I tend to make up probably about six or seven serves. Um, it sits in the fridge easily for about four or five days, um, so it's always good to have when you're on the run, nice and quick and easy just to reheat in the microwave. All right. Uh, so we're on a low heat with the chicken now, that's just sitting there with the coconut milk. Uh, we'll just add the sun-dried tomatoes to it. The sun-dried tomatoes, again, I'll just add about a handful uh, towards it, plus a little bit more. And just stir that through. So we'll just all let all that soak through. So basically, we'll just rinse off the pasta. Uh, we add the pasta to the chicken and the sun-dried tomatoes, as well as the pesto, which I need to finish off. Job's done. All right, guys, um, got my pasta ready to go. Just rinse that off already. I'm um, just adding the pesto to the chicken dish. Um, just to basically finish that off. Basically, we'll just mix that through with the rest of the chicken and sun-dried tomato. I was just going to say also, with the uh, carbohydrate intake, um, our daily requirements, we still require some carbohydrates each day, whether it's light activity, um, just to get through from day to day um, and week to week activity. Obviously, the boot camp clients, um, if you're doing two or three sessions a week, it's quite intense, obviously, as you know. Um, still require a lot of carbohydrates. I tend to eat, uh, myself personally, I eat about 500 grams in one city, which is quite a lot. We don't expect you to eat that much. Um, probably about half that amount, 250 grams, will be enough to get you through uh, another couple of days of activity. If you need more further information on the carbohydrate amounts and uh, what our body intake should be, just come and ask us at boot camp and whilst we can't give you a proper uh, dietary uh, program or plan from week to week, we can give you guidance on what you um, may require in terms of nutritional um, value with your protein, carbs and fats each week as well. Alright, so that's all mixed through with the pesto chicken. Uh, I'm just going to add the pasta to it and it's looking good. Hope you get a chance to give it a crack at home. Uh, let me know if you do, and let me know what it tastes like. Hi guys, Cheers. I'm Marita from Fit Styler, and I'm here to give you the trainers tip of the month. Today we're in Coles, and I'm going to teach you about grocery shopping. 
Let's have a look at the breakfast aisle. I bet it's found in many homes and it says it's a protein cereal for Iron Man. However, when you look at the back, full of stuff you shouldn't put in your body. It's got one, two, three, four different types of sugar, all hidden under different names. And to be honest, when would you ever put sodium bicarbonate or gluten or salt in your breakfast? Never. When I cook, I usually prep my food on Sundays, buy all the food from the fresh produce aisle and everything is sorted for the rest of the week. Let's go have a look. This section before the fresh produce aisle, we don't want anything here. Nothing. Don't buy it unless you recognize all the ingredients. If you want something, make it yourself. This is where you want to find the most of your food. Um, heaps of fresh produce, there's no other ingredients than what you can tell. This, just the tomato, there's nothing else but tomatoes in it. The only other thing you could pick from the aisles are eggs. Potentially oats, if you're into that. Make sure you pick um, free range eggs and oats with no added preservatives or sugar. Everything in here is natural and will provide your body with heaps of vitamins and minerals. Just keep in mind that when you're out doing your groceries, pick stuff that has ingredients that you recognize or that you can make yourself at home from whatever is in it. Keep training hard and eat healthy and prep your food for the week. Hey guys, how you go? Stuck in the office. Not too happy, a bit bored, a bit stressed. Here's this quick little program we can do in the office to get you alive, happy, and enjoying your day. All right, so with this program, the idea of it isn't to make you sweat and tired, simply to get you up and move around for a couple minutes every day, hopefully more than that. All right, so the other thing about this, I'm just gonna do two or three reps in each um, exercise, but when you do it, do 20 to 30 uh, reps, depending on how sore you are. Alright, let's get going. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna grab a ream of paper. Alright, so this exercise is gonna be too um, easy. Just grab two reams of paper, still too easy to read. So what are you doing? Grab the ream of paper, touch on the ground, like that, spread right above your head. So you're doing your legs and you're doing your shoulders. Go all the way down, keep your heels um, on the ground, bum straight, two, three. There you go. So what we're gonna do Again, do 20 to 30 reps of those, um, and then to go into the next exercise. So the next exercise, put the paper down for a minute. Good old tricep dips. So I've got the seat here. Um, if it's on wheels like this one is, and you're worried about disappearing right on you, simply block the wheels. So what we're going to do is again holding your hands out straight ahead, going down, trying to put your bum on the ground, straight up, back straight, try to get back as close to the seat as you can. If you want to make it harder, put your legs straighter. Or if you still want to make it harder, you put one leg in the air. So it's going to go, breathe in, back up, two, and three. So there you go, that's the exercise number two. Again, 20 to 30 reps of that. All right, we're going to grab the paper now, do a few abs. We're going to do a whole squat, so you're doing the legs as well. Paper straight out, and it's going to go big circles. One, two, three. Hold it straight after a second. All right, what we can do again? Do 20, then going the other way around. One, two, three. Just like that. So that's doing again, doing abs, doing shoulders as well. Got a couple more for you. Second to last exercise we've got for you today. Just doing some calf raises. So I'm still holding the paper. That's why you still do a little bit more of your shoulders than that. So what you're going to do? Grab the paper like that. It's going to go up on your tippy toes. Straight up, hold it for a couple of seconds, back down. Then you're gonna go all the way up, that, and then breathe down, and all the way up, and back down. If you wanna make it a little bit higher, you can grab the paper and your weights are not lying around, and you can shoulder shrug. So you can hold the paper like that, your shoulders all the way up, and back down. So you do your shoulders and your legs, count the 10 times. Two, three, yeah. 
beautiful. You get rid of the paper, someone else can use it for photocopying. All right, so now we're gonna do final little exercise, a bit of a stretch as well. So just arms like that, reaching all the way up. Breathe, back down, take your breath. All the way up, slowly extend the arms, your back straight, and back down, and just one more. Demonstration, just all the way up. Hold it, really try to engage your core as well. And breathe back down. That's the end of the actual exercises. What you do now is you go for a quick walk, maybe to the um, kitchen or the toilet or whatever it might be, just to keep moving around. Um, like I said, 20 to 30, excuse me, reps of each exercise, two or three times a day is perfect, just to keep you moving. Um, Try to get as many people in the office involved as well. Guys, uh, just remember, we've just opened up the Botanical Garden Sessions. Tuesday, Thursday morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Also, Monday, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Also, we're going on a hiking trip on the 19th of October. So, if you'd like to join in, please uh, give us a call and inquire about that. Um, also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel as well. We've got a lot of videos, especially from the um, recent 10k challenge. Uh, if you've got any other questions or problems, just give us a call. We're always here to help. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Thank you.